A few years ago, I woke up to the fact that there's more to life than what we've been told. Exploring a new spiritual path, I stumbled upon Moldavite. This is where our story begins. You are invited as I share not only my own personal journey, but also talk with people just like you that have been working with Moldavite. We have some amazing things to share, so please join us. All right, you guys, this is Levi, the Moldavite guy. Welcome back. All right, this is episode three. And actually, no, <clears throat> this is part three. So part three, episode 11. <laughs> Today's date, 9-9-18. I'm recording all three of the these uh, shows here. <clears throat> part one, part two, part three on 9-9-18. Again, for any of you numerologists, Nine is a very good number. All right, so let's get right into it. <clears throat> so, the fact for the day, uh, when you create a vacuum, it is simply uh, a natural order of the universe to fill that void. This kind of dovetails into and from the lesson for the day from the last episode. <clears throat> now, we're talking about Moldavite, we're talking about massive transformation. And if you've seen part one and two of this series here, working with Moldavite last couple of years, you're up to speed. If not, please go back and watch the other two. Um, otherwise, you might be a little bit lost. So part three, here we go. So when I left, uh, I left Virginia and was on my way for a journey which I kind of knew that again I, I had accepted massive change was coming but I had no idea what kind of massive change was coming <laughs> and by that I mean okay so um, on the drive I left about 10 or 11 at night and on the drive this is this is I saw a say it's kind of a sign or omen I don't know whatever you want to call it <clears throat> and this plays into later on not this episode but a future podcast episode I saw a meteor a meteorite and this is not like a, simply a star that was you know streaking and then it's gone this was actually a, a meteorite that was bright and was coming straight in my direction so picture this i'm heading down the interstate and just cruising along it's nighttime and i see this bright star what more or less looks like a star at the time and it continues to get ever more brighter and at first i was thinking all right is that Is that a star? Okay, no. Is that a plane? No. It wasn't blinking. wasn't wasn't changing. Um, and as it got closer, I realized, holy crap, that's a meteorite. And so, um, as I'm driving down the road, um, there was just a split second. I was like, wait a minute kind of odd because it's coming straight toward me and then as as I, I followed it for probably a good 30 seconds which is highly unusual um, to be able to 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 see something like that because normally it's it's there and it's gone within a split second um, so <clears throat> actually found out later on through a website uh, that I found online that there is this site where people will post when they see uh, a meteorite and depending on how many people they get in one area or in many states or even countries they can actually pinpoint where this meteorite began to be seen and where it was no longer seen meaning like that's where it hit that's where it landed and so um what I found out later on was that this was one that I think it was about 30 people or so. 30 people saw it. 
And I just took this as kind of an omen. Um, and I thought it was quite ironic that the exact place, the exact time, uh, I was able to see something like that. It just, wow. Anyways, sorry to go on and on about that. It plays into uh, episode, probably several episodes in the future here. So, get back to this. So this meteorite went right by me what looked like it was it could have been a few blocks away a few city blocks away but um <clears throat> turns out it was heading uh to uh north carolina and i don't remember um exactly where where it landed but i i have to look it up on the website again anyways i'll, I'll post a link to that page in the show notes for today's video. So if you want to check out that site, it's pretty interesting. Um, anyways, back to the show here. <laughs> okay, so if you remember, I was driving to meet the love of my life and for us to more or less um, begin a life. And so uh, if you remember, I've been uh, working with Moldavite for about a year, year and a half or so at the time, and um, had a reading done by a psychic who said I was probably going to meet this person I'd known in a past life. So fast forward, now you're up to date. Um, so we decided that we were going to get a place together, uh, rather than me try to find a um, uh, apartment or a room to share or something like that. And as it turns out, she had a friend that offered uh, offered a place for me to stay, and which was huge. I mean, that was you know I was really grateful for that. And so that that was that was an experience unto itself. And the reason I say that is because all right. So when I when I moved here, I physically felt like. I was being weighted down like it felt like somebody had evenly distributed 20 pounds of weight on me and I still to this day don't know exactly what this is about but I felt that uh, for about the first month or so of being here and um, I don't know if it was simply adjusting to the altitude I don't know if it was the actually no I don't think it was the altitude um, I don't know if it was the energy of the place because supposedly this whole area is a bed of it was it's built on a bed of quartz essentially quartz uh, the mountains around this whole area just quartz and um, anyway a lot of magic in here so um, my okay so my girlfriend and I got a we, we found an apartment. Um, we you know looked around. We decided on this one place. It was uh, in uh, it was a very very historic, um, like something you would see out of like let's see old time. I don't know something something you'd see back in like uh, a Christmas story or something like that. It was not a not a house. This was an apartment, but the neighborhood was. Uh, you know, it, it was, it had a lot of natural charm. I don't, by that, I don't mean it was run down. I mean, it was, it was really nice uh, for what it was. Um, granted, there were some traditional uh, <clears throat> apartment uh, issues, but it's just the way it was. <laughs> um, so, fast forward, uh, I, I, recorded uh, a couple of videos here for the podcast because I knew I wanted to get back to it. I just hadn't got back to it. As I mentioned in the previous you know, part two, my um, laptop was stolen and uh, no longer had the audio and video software or everything I needed to be able to put these together. So anyways, um, so my girlfriend and I had a place and it, you know, it was not apparent at the time, but uh, quickly became 
a parent will say after about six months or so um, that it was a little it was tougher than we thought and um, you know in hindsight I would have I wish I would have slowed down I wish I would have um, you know tried to to get a place on my own or not on my, not necessarily on my own but like to rent a room or something because after about six months um, it became apparent that there was just some stresses in our relationship and she's a wonderful person she's uh, got a beautiful heart uh, really can't say enough there and um, it you know when when it finally came to time to uh, sorry I'm getting a little choked up <clears throat> when it when it came time to move you know it, it, it was very again very apparent that that it was very stressful on us uh, and we both moved very quickly like quicker than than we should have woulda coulda shoulda you know there's lessons to be learned either way we you know at least we took that chance and that is one thing that I will say I, I'm absolutely uh, I have no regrets um, you know that, that we that we went and did that but anyways I'm dancing around the bush again so uh, she had told me a couple times that if we had stayed there um, you know stayed there for probably about another six months or so that it would would have probably would have done irreparable harm to our relationship and um, that you know that that when it when it sank in that that really you know it, it sent off a uh, you know single signal to me that hey okay um, I really love this person I want to try and make this work and it it you know it was time for me to do whatever I could uh, you know to to be able to have an environment that's not in that environment to where we would both be happy and so anyways at the time uh, she was um, she was doing her th I, I don't, I'm, I'm being careful what I say because out of respect for for her um, and the uh, her personal life and everything so anyways we both decided this was the best thing we wanted to continue dating and we both wanted to save money we both radically wanted to save money so I chose to uh, try and find a place where I could either um, not live off the land but close as close to it as possible and the option that I found was actually um, a place that I found for uh, it was a work trade and so I was essentially staying on uh, this person's land um, in a tent and I had a plan my plan was to simply stay in a tent for a month save up the money that I would normally spend on rent and then buy a high quality four season tent and continue doing that well it was rough like really really rough it was hard it was, it was extremely hard because um, okay so here's some backstory I um, before moving here I lived off-grid uh, for about two and a half years in um, a camper no power no water and um, anyways another story another time so when I moved here I was more or less moving on grid and that was uh, that was a lot more challenging than I thought I didn't I didn't realize what that I mean what that would be like like I was I was I was in um, traditional mainstream light mainstream life more or less during the day while did you know did my work whatever I did and then when I came home peace and quiet nature and uh, it was really like you know just a, a breath of fresh air I don't know if you guys are 
city or country or where, wherever you're, wherever you're, wherever you live. Um, but if you experience, it's almost like a, uh, experiencing one after a long time. There's a, this almost like a shock, culture shock. And so, moving into the apartment, I experienced that, and it was um, it was not expected. And I experienced that again when moving from the apartment into uh, the tent because I was not paying any rent. Um, I still had, uh, had my truck doing everything else normal. Um, I was doing work trade, so I'd, I'd help them around the, you know, the yard, do whatever yard work, a little bit in the garden, whatever you needed done. But the thing was, I was spending so much money in, uh, for, for storage unit, for, um, gas for my truck and um, food it, it it was counterproductive I mean literally counterproductive oh time that was another huge one so the uh, I it was literally spinning I felt like I was spinning my wheels I was increasingly frustrated um, but the other factor that really made it rough was that um, at the, the time, the season, I was camping was during springtime. And springtime in the mountains can be very unpredictable. And this is what I've quickly learned. <laughs> so, springtime in the mountains. I mean, it literally rained two, sometimes three out of three days of the week. I am not kidding that is not an exaggeration it literally rained at least two out of three days in that month that I was there and so my uh, I, I you know did the best to keep the tent dry um, tried to keep everything um, you know up off the ground best I could I it just again it was um, it was frustrating going back and forth um, because I had to drive into town more or less to uh, get get the pieces that I have made and get those shipped out. Um, there were a small handful of, of customers um, that were reasonably upset. Um, but again, I was just experiencing more major personal change in my outer life. Um, and my personal life, you know, it was, again, it was really rough. Uh, in, in, in ways and um, my girlfriend and I we you know it, it was it was difficult there too because um, I mean in some ways she could see how I was frustrated uh, especially in that environment and at the same time come on fellas if you're trying to have a date over and you don't have a working shower it's kind of rough so, um, it was basically primitive living, um, and <clears throat> so after quickly realizing that that was not going to be my life at the present, I, it, something had to change, and, you know, realizing that uh, my life has drastically changed in the last year. So another element to this story is, you know, when I moved here, I, I thought that I would have to uh, to get a job, and um, I, with the money that I saved from the move, basically sold everything, sold anything I could. Um, I took that money and I put that into um, doing what I had the passion for, and that was moldavite jewelry. So, um, I didn't know if I would sink or swim, but I had to find out. And so, um, it more or less just took off. I mean, it was, it was a hobby before more or less, but it, it took off. And so, um, while living in the tent, I realized that, again, my life you know, a year ago, it completely changed. 
So there's no way that I could continue doing what I was doing uh, in the tent because there were literally days where I would go um, go somewhere to create or go, you know, I, again, I created out there, but um, sorry, hearing something in the woods. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, it was obvious that something had to change. And <clears throat> so a month after, after out, being out there in the woods, I, I, I finally found a place uh, that was back on grid and <clears throat> it's a nice place, um, but it doesn't have the nature, you know? And I've come to realize that that is important. That's very important to me and, and my well-being. I just really enjoy being out in nature. Um, so there's a balance that I'm walking right now. Um, and I'm trying to wrap this up, trying not so it doesn't get too long. But again, to get you guys up to speed and where I'm at, uh, the podcast is going on. The show must go on. <laughs> and um, so that's that's been this rapid year of change with Moldavite. Um, this whole last year. Oh, I forgot. So this love of my life, the one that I met at the Moldavite ceremony, which neither one of us knew. Um, you know, again, the only guy out of 40 women. Um, she's, um, she, again, she's a wonderful person, beautiful heart. Um, she uh, broke up with me uh, a week after moving into the, the new place. <clears throat> and so, Again, that's more, you know, in, in a way it's, it's frustrating because I feel like massive, massive, massive change has just taken place uh, in the last two years since I've been working with Moldavite and even more so in the last year. Um, so it's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, it's all for the best. You know, and another thing that I felt when, um, be just before moving to this area, I felt like I was on this, um, it almost felt like I was on this accelerated, uh, train that was going faster and faster and faster, but I didn't know where or when I was going to be there. And once I actually arrived here that feeling went away. So in a way, I kind of feel like love brought me here. Um, I moved for love, but that, you know, that's simply, uh, it's, it's, a uh, it's just a, it's a day. It's a, it's a blink in a lifetime. Really. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a step. Um, so right now, uh, where I'm at is, now creating these it's kind of hard for you to see let me take this off now creating uh, kind of the next level of moldavite jewelry we'll say energy jewelry and well hopefully you can see this in the light uh, these are wowsery kind of pieces. This is wowser energy. What's wowser? What's wowser energy feel like? Wow, wow, wow. That's not me. That was Abby, Abby Normal. She's she's the one that coined that. <laughs> I thought that was cool. During that um, healing journey and uh, session, she uh, she uh, described it as wowser energy. Um, so, anyways, I'm deeply into metaphysics, um, creating these pieces um, that I'm not exactly sure how I'm doing it, but it's getting done. 
and it, um, you know, I thought about it, tried to come up with an analogy, and it kind of feels like, um, you know, you <clears throat> you get in the car and you go somewhere, and you get there and you're like, wow, that was cool. It's a lot of fun. How did we get here? I don't know. <laughs> so it's it's almost like the GPS is broken. I mean, I get there and I can make these really cool, amazing pieces, but I don't know how I'm doing it. And that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm trying to get in touch with. I'm trying to get in touch with, uh, again, kind of the deeper levels of uh, knowing thyself at the deeper levels of um, allowing, being in tune, and knowing my guides, knowing uh, what these next steps are to um, to help. You know, had a number of, well, good handful of um, sessions from psychics, uh, healing sessions from wonderful healers, and learned many things almost feel like they're pieces to a puzzle and so <clears throat> that's kind of where I'm at so with that I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up so it doesn't go too long because it's already running long and I'll leave you with let's see lesson for the day oh real quick if you want to help support the podcast you can go check out uh, moldavitelife.com and again I'll be making some more videos here I'll be posting them hopefully in a regular uh, regular basis because again I got to get back up to speed with um, getting the sound sound and video editing going on so um, anyways lesson for the day <clears throat> when you choose to create a very large vacuum or void in your life be prepared for everything the universe has to offer and experience because there will be joy there will be sorrow excitement, many ups and many downs, sprinkled with life experiences, life lessons along the way. Um, and again, I, I really do believe that uh, Moldavite has played its fair share and role in, in my life and is still continuing to do so. So um, with that, um, until next time, you guys have a good one. Take care.